We live in a democracy and we should be able to discuss everything openly. This is one of our guiding principles and another reason why we as the Swiss health television company QS24 want to share other perspectives with you that may not always match normal medicine. Due to a new regulation by YouTube, it might now be the case that some of the very polarizing videos are deleted from time to time. On our website, qs24.tv, under the heading Censorship Videos, we will continue to make them available to you, because QS24 stands for Democracy and Freedom of Opinion. A warm welcome to all our viewers, to our series Natural Medicine. Hans Rausch is back today, and I'll read to you briefly who Hans Rausch is. Dear viewers, he's a biologist, he's a chemist. He's visiting professor at the TCM University in China, in China and Japan, and generally in Asia. He's considered one of the leading scientists. He's a lecturer at the University of Applied Science in Isny, Germany, for many years. He represents the foundation for phytotherapy, where his unit of measurement, his gold standards, are being used as a tool, but are also used in pharmacy. The authorities all know him, of course, because he set these gold standards, and the industry and pharmaceuticals are his customers. So he's also Deputy Federal Chairman at the German Standardization Institute, DIN, officially recognized expert in pharmaceutical law and counter-expert in legal disputes. So that's briefly about the reputation of my guest, whom I would like to welcome warmly. Hello Hans, nice to have you back. Thank you for the invitation, I'm pleased. Maybe we can have a few critical discussions here and maybe also communicate other points of views. Yeah, and being able to leave them as is without denouncing. So today we chose the topic of what Wuhan did right. We only know that this was the place of origin and it all spread from there. We hardly heard anything about it, what the Chinese did right in Wuhan, to get it all under control quickly. You were very much involved, you know a lot about it. And I'd like to know if they only worked with vitamin C and locked everyone up and gave them vitamin C and that was it. Or what was really going on? Well, you have to put a few things into perspective, right from the start, from your introduction. Number one, it is said that Wuhan is the source. Nobody knows where this virus, COVID, is coming from. So, also the original assumption of a renowned German virologist who openly claims that it's a bat virus is not really verifiable at any point in time. So that means we don't know at all at the moment from which animal this virus could have jumped, how it originated and whether it actually originated from the Wuhan region or if it was brought from somewhere else. Anyone who is familiar with virology knows, or even a normal person knows, that every year flu, influenza waves arise all over the world. So many of them have their origins in Southeast Asia. You can't say exactly whether it's coming from this corner or from there. The problem, why Wuhan gained such notoriety, was because the massive outbreak was all over the city, which motivated the Chinese government because, of course, in a political system like they have, unpleasant decisions can be made faster than here in the West, where Let's say more people have to co-decide in these situations. So they were very fast in actually sealing off an entire region spatially. As uncomfortable as it was for the population, of course, one thing has to be put into perspective. The Wuhan region, which has been basically isolated from the rest of China, 
has a population density of approximately 85 million. This corresponds to the total population of the Federal Republic of Germany, so different dimensions than in Switzerland, where you really have a complete population group completely sealed off from the outside world. So that means all train connections were cut, all flight connections were cut, the streets were closed. So basically created almost a state of war with the military in order to prevent an exchange from this zone as much as possible. Of course, this only works if all virus carriers are only there on site and the virus hasn't spread already to the outside world through silent latency carriers which show no symptoms. And that is also one of the reasons that small centers of infection have, have flared up in other regions in China, which were then immediately isolated again to actually keep it under control. That means that politics in the West, because of its, I'll say now, limited scope for action, of course were never able to implement this rigorous measure. And, of course, we had an even bigger problem. It was a new type of virus, of which no test systems were actually known. Namely, the symptoms, it is a viral disease, because it was not treatable with antibiotics. It is an upper respiratory disease. The symptoms are similar, very similar to a flu-like infection. In other words, in the initial phase, one assumed it was something new, but it is not flu, so not influenza. And before test systems could actually be established, a scientist needs a certain amount of time. We have a novel virus. Let me put it this way. Coronaviruses are old hat for a virologist. There are many coronaviruses, many of which are, of course, very harmless to humans. For example, we have, now please don't be surprised if I digress here, but there is the classic cat death. We assume that every second cat in Western Europe has a coronavirus, which leads to a considerable let's say, infant mortality in young cats. So these are well-known coronaviruses that have been known in Europe for decades, that are dealt with where they say, OK, they don't spread to humans, we have no problems with it, and the whole thing can be controlled. Only now we had a novel virus, it's produced symptoms similar to flu, and suddenly, however, when examined under the electron microscope, we still have a little schematic drawing here, it's also characterized by the fact that it has a shell, so it is an enveloped virus. And this shell then has corresponding protein structures and also fat structures on the outside. And this is important for the stability of the virus. And so it looks completely different from an influenza virus. So you could even look at it photographically, electron microscopically, or with the appropriate magnification technique, and could see we know something like that. It's, it's something corona-like. And only then did they start examining the genetic material. Uh, what kind of gene structures are there? And found out relatively quickly that it was something new. We don't know it like that. Just to take the, up the cudgels for a moment, because you told me last night when I told you that many experts here in the house have already said it was pure influenza. 
You tell me, no, it was a dangerous virus. This corona, and it still is today. There are many people who had corona, haven't even noticed it, but ultimately have experienced great damage to the lungs and also to the kidney. So I just wanted to mention that, that so that we know it's something serious, it's not a game. Well, it's not what you call a, uh, let's say, medium-strong flu. Which heals without leaving any significant damage in the body. I wouldn't underestimate that with Corona. Yesterday, I spoke to an internationally reputable colleague who also works in virology, and he said one thing to me. Actually, we should put the coronavirus on the same level as the Spanish flu, so a special kind of flu, which caused around 20 million deaths in Europe in the 1920s. So a completely different dimension than a, a normal flu-like attack. We have worse flu viruses. They have caused in 2018 and 2019, for example, an estimated 25,000 deaths in Germany. So a number that is actually higher than the number of corona deaths at the moment. But the year isn't over yet. We have an incredibly big topic that we'd like to deal with in 12 minutes, dear Hans. I thought it was incredibly important what you just said. It's serious, it's, it's not a game. Not to be underestimated, and therefore, just to say now, that it is the arbitrariness of politics to intervene more massively than what is otherwise known for influenza. There is very much a reason on the significantly changed situation of Corona. I always thought that I don't know everything, but I was never informed the way you told me clearly for the first time today. So far, I took the facts and added two and two together from what I hear, and that gave a, a different picture. So thank you very much for this clear reference. But what did Wuhan do to get it all under control so quickly? We still have two stories very shortly before that. Number one, we must not assume that this virus will stay as it is. That is a very, very important statement. It mutates, it mutates, and it does, it mutates very quickly. So months ago, it was clear that for the virus in China, in, in Wuhan, compared to Ischl in Austria, at least six mutations were identified. That means that we already have six mutations through this spillover from Asia to Europe. The Italian virus again differs massively from the Austrian one. We assume that the Spanish is also different from the Italian again. That means that is now the consequence again, which then suggests the statement for me that a vaccination, which would be a possibility, represents a risk. The vaccination might then be good for Ischl or for Spain, possibly for one, but never for all of them. We were allowed to learn one thing. People always use the beautiful example, but we have measles under control. The measles virus is actually a lethargic virus. It doesn't defend itself. We can still fight measles today with a vaccine that we used 70 years ago because it has not undergone any change. It's still responding to it, so it doesn't mutate. That means I can bring it under control beautifully. The opposite example in the other direction, we've been trying to find a vaccine against HIV for 30 years. It mutates. I can't look that fast. In other words, it gives us the runaround. Oh yes, but you can still prevent the death of a patient with medication today, right? Yes, and that's exactly where I actually wanted to go. So that we can come back to our question, what did Wuhan do right? 
In Wuhan, the Chinese government decided we have to do something to reduce the death rate, to treat people, to cure them, and used everything that was known somewhere. Several herbal therapeutics were in use for viral diseases in China, among other things, and an approved remedy, which should also be available in Europe in some form in the future, where I am partly responsible for, well, to get this virus infection under control to some extent. This has been recommended by the Chinese government as one of the therapeutic approaches besides chemically defined ones. If we now say that a classically chemically defined one contains one signal, one substance, a product like the one that was used among others in China, then looks like this. There are then thousands of these ingredients in it many of which are not yet known. However, because there are many components in it, they can also attack at several sites of action. And now the connection is coming back to HIV. We got HIV under control when medicine understood that the creed of classical pharmaceutical therapy of Western medicine, let's use a single active ingredient, has been thrown overboard. Oh, they used to have the same. You always treat it with one signal, with one active ingredient. And today you do it like that too. Not exactly like that, but sometimes with up to 12, 15 different drugs at the same time. And then therapy is possible. So that means we have learned that with viral infections, with highly variable viruses, basically the mono approach, the monosubstantial approach, is usually not successful. Because the virus reacts to it, and then suddenly I can't do what I'd like to do. But if I approach the virus with a multiple mixture of active components, I can affect it in many places, perhaps less severely, but in total much more severely than through monosubstances. That means that the body is able to do the rest by itself again. Well, therapy is always, we enable the body to help itself. Outside help is not possible anyway in the vast majority of cases. And was it the same in Wuhan? In Wuhan, chemical substances were sometimes given in combination with herbal preparations. And it was found out that some of the side effects were stronger and the healing effect was less than those where the herbal supplement was given alone. And this product is not available because China still needs it for its own therapy and thus doesn't export it out of the country. And it was not allowed to come into circulation in Europe because it wasn't approved. Finished products under pharmaceutical law may only be sold if they have a drug approval from the relevant authorities. There is only one way around that, which I have taken, just out of consciousness. I want to give the population something so that the risk and damage to the population can be reduced without actually having to break the law. And I succeeded from the original manufacturer who produced and patented this preparation for China to have the underlying active ingredients produced in another way, so as not to affect the production of China. So, to produce them in a new way and then have them mixed in German pharmacies. So, if the whole thing is done within the framework of the recipe, approval is not required at the moment. We are striving for approval in the long term, of course, but of course it takes years to realize that. Only the virus doesn't wait for years. So, flu vaccinations are being approved without doing long studies and such important things then take years. Years go by. On the other hand, I would say, and rightfully, 
rightfully so, to avoid risks, we had a thalidomide scandal because it was not looked at closely. I'm not the representative of those who say we want to approve something uncontrolled and quickly. But we have different frame conditions for this product. And that's the reason why I favour this one and why I don't see the others as positive. A special mixture was used in Italy that is from China, that works in China, but which may be viewed critically by European authorities. I am also involved in these processes and can very well differentiate. We can't use the Japanese approaches either in Europe, for example, because a plant contained in it is now legally prohibited in Europe because there was abuse to a certain extent. And it's, it's not cannabis, I have to say, but it's ephedra. And this is the main therapeutic for all lung diseases in Japanese medicine. Thus, all approaches that work in Japan actually are called off for the European market. That means that we are actually more or less almost not allowed to import this plant material. Therefore, we can't realize the mixture here. And that's the whole branch of therapy that has basically been lost due to abuse by certain types of clientele. I'd like to add a quiet note for a moment, dear viewers. This episode will go on for as long as it has already lasted. It, it is an exceptional program, a special program. I can't stop because we're in the middle of an incredibly important topic. So for you, dear hands, do take your time. We won't be ready in 25 minutes. We'll keep going. OK, no problem on my part. So, of course, you have to consider one thing now. There are several approaches in Asian phytomedicine, which, of course, has a exactly this multi-component system. And you have to know one thing as a basis. So, a plant or any plant is now believed to contain between one and two million components. Every plant, not every part of the plant, like we heard in the last episode. That, that's one thing. If we now use plant mixtures, as traditional medicine has always used in Europe too, monastery medicine too was always a mix of formulations. In the rarest cases, only one plant alone. So the sleep mixes were also hops, valerian and lemon balm, for example. And not just valerian alone. So traditional therapies were usually mixtures of plants. So compositions of plants that interact with each other and from a scientific point of view even have so-called synergistic effects. So they reinforce each other's effects. This means that the combination of A and B and C is not the sum A plus B plus C, but in many cases multiplicative and in some cases exponential. That means if I take one of these components away, the effect goes down. And these are effects that you have to know, of course, and that have shaped Asian medicine more to this day. We have strongly turned away from it because we've always liked to orientate ourselves towards Western medicine with its one component and then said, then we'll make one plant because one plant is also one active ingredient. And then we're back to the single system. In fact, we have sacrificed the knowledge that we had on the altar of adaptation. And a lot of knowledge has been lost. Asian medicine still has this knowledge and tries to preserve it. And that is what we can learn from again. And of course, to be able to fall back on the considerable resource base, of course, we have to do one other thing. If we have a few minutes longer, then I'll digress again. The pharmaceutical industry is making great efforts in cancer therapy. With great success in cancer therapy, they are obvious, they are there. 
But if we take a closer look at the active ingredients, a not inconsiderable proportion of all cancer active ingredients is based on Chinese medicinal plant ingredients for its basic structure. Oh, that's nice, I didn't know. It's not communicated because if I use the plant, I can't patent it. If I take the structure out of the plant, modify it slightly chemically, I can patent it and make a lot of money. So, of course, the manufacturers won't say that this is an old hat that the Chinese already knew 2,000 years ago, but we are the smartest and we know better. So that's a very different approach. So that means in Asian medicine, we probably have 10,000 pharmacologically relevant plants, few of which are even known in the West. And you only know a hint of the ingredients they contain. That means, typically in traditional medicine in Europe, we also have some corresponding traditional medicine from the Asian region with many doctors here in Europe. Out of the 10,000, typically 100 to 120 plants are used. If it's then someone with a lot of experience, they may then go up to 500, but that's it. In other words, the rest is actually a potential that is currently as a raw material resource, as an active ingredient resource, as a starting resource, is of no importance for the treatment of diseases. So, if we really imagine the multitude of components, they are gigantic amounts of different structures, which are always astonishing to me. When I look at these structures and say, I would have expected anything but this structure. So, I also experience new components from Asian medicine every day, and I've been working with it for 20 years. Substance chemical, so the individual ingredients, in other words, to take a closer look at the individual peaks, which could be relevant for which effect and so on, and by using multi-component mixtures for cases like those, we have a higher probability to produce a therapeutic, lasting effect, instead of the mono, instead of a mono preparation. The mono preparation always has the risk that due to its structure of action, it actually always shows a massively higher potential for side effects than the lower dosed plant-based ones which nevertheless achieve a high level of, of effectiveness, because not just one connection is responsible for it, but hundreds are used for this effect. And if we now bridge this gap again, so in Wuhan, several herbal products were used, but different ones, some are relatively fresh, relatively new where there was only a few empirical values. Of course, in the fear that we have nothing against a new disease, but that's already been used with SARS, with MERS, with swine flu. This special one that we are talking about was actually developed not for corona. Nobody knew that corona would ever become a human disease in this dimension. It was developed in 2003 for SARS and was fully approved in 2005 for these viral diseases of the upper respiratory tract. But it's not a classic, traditional TCM mixture, but already a modernized product. It's also produced industrially, so not just boiled, but also produced industrially and is protected by patent by the authority of China, by the authority and for the manufacturer. So there is a monopoly manufacturer who produces this product, who is allowed to do it, because the rights belong to them. Can I open another bracket? But that was successful with SARS. That was successful with SARS. It was successful with influenza, with the bird flu, H5N1, and also with MERS. And that's why the government said, we have something that is actually unspecific. There are different diseases, all viral, and the upper respiratory tract, and, and that was the common denominator. And when they saw that we have an upper respiratory disease, 
Warum and viral, why shouldn't we use what we already know? What has been used successfully for decades and about which we know that it has no side effects, why shouldn't that be used there too? And that was the reason why they issued this recommendation in Wuhan at the end of January. Guys, we have something, please use it. It was never communicated to me. I've only heard of vitamin C. There is discussion in Europe. So, in China, every antiviral that was available anywhere in the world market has been used more or less for this cause. They grabbed all the straws that were there and were able to select more successful and less successful ones. What has emerged through the empirical values from the clinics is this combination of eight plants that we're currently talking about, which had been approved for a long time, an experienced product that the doctors knew how to handle. It was in capsule form, easy to take and so on, showed or could show that the duration of the illness could be shortened and the intensity of the symptoms could be reduced. So you can't say you prevent everything immediately because they actually only used it if the patients were already seriously ill. That means nobody would have received such therapy without illness. In other words, the earlier start, of course, the greater the success of the therapy. So it, it is of no use to take the whole prophylactically, because it is a therapeutic and not a prophylactic. I was just about to ask that. Okay, that's why I said that. So there are also prophylactics that you can use to stimulate the immune system, to constitutionalize the body better, so that it can deal better with such a viral attack. Though these are prophylactic drugs, there are also approaches from Southeast Asia that have also been optimized by Western doctors, respectively TCM doctors working in the West, to this topic. Such products are also available in pharmacies with the appropriate recipe. So you can also order them, for example, in the train station pharmacy in Kempton, that's a mail order pharmacy, and they can deliver across Europe, made from compactates, from corresponding mixtures, again from the same manufacturer that we already know about, that we get the high quality. Is that the only pharmacy for now? That's one at the moment. There are four pharmacies, all of which are located in northern Germany. One in Stralsund, one in Hamburg, but that one is here in the southern area. And that is the pharmacy that can also supply other pharmacies and that has a very high catchment area, which supplies Austria, which also supplies Switzerland, which can and is legally allowed to deliver to more or less all of Germany. This pharmacy now gets these eight active ingredients of herbal medicine. In the original formulation, in individual components and can mix them together according to the corresponding predetermined formulation so that it corresponds to that. So, it is analogous to the original drug in China, or is comparable, but not the Chinese drug. Because this is manufactured industrially, but we basically have to have a product generated by the pharmacist, who then puts it together with the same result of what is already in the other finished one. Before we go into prevention, I mean, this is now a product that helps, and that was clearly shown in Wuhan. But which European should now buy this in the pharmacy? As soon as I have corona, I'm in isolation and I'm bound to academic medicine, and I go the way that the authorities told us. Why does this solution from Wuhan that you have now carried to Europe not get via the authorities to we people. That is, uh, let's put it this way, not really understandable for me either. Politicians are involved. Politicians know that such approaches exist. But of course, the lobbying by the pharmaceutical industry has discredited the herbal therapists more and more. We're actually not trusted that we are really able to react accordingly.
I can't interpret it any other way. You're in touch with the Bavarian Ministry of Interior. So the Bavarian Ministry of the Interior was informed by me and I got the answer. I will be approached if necessary. Now, of course, you have to ask the question, do we not have a need or do we not want it? Or do we not trust the possibility that it will really work? The Federal Minister of Health in Germany asked us to submit a clinical study in Germany. And that'll take another year. In that year, people just die. So that's the question. But there are studies. There are enough studies that of course have not been made on Corona because Corona has only actually been in therapy since January or since February, to be completely honest, when it started. That means, of course, we didn't do any classical clinical studies in Wuhan. The doctors were busy basically treating the people not filling out any forms of paper. And if you just fulfill this formalism, even if we submit this study, we're repeatedly reproached. It could be that the Asian person reacts differently to something like that than the European person. And that means a study is absolutely necessary. Of course, I have to say, and that should have been known, that a clinical study was in preparation. I have been working with this product since the beginning of 2018 because I saw a possibility with it to cushion the risks of flu outbreaks in Europe. By introducing and fully approving this drug in Europe as a future therapeutic agent for viral diseases of the upper respiratory tract. However, to allow a combination of eight active ingredients in Europe is a massive challenge that very, very few have faced up to now, and which, of course, cost me a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money to even develop this possibility. And then it still takes time to go through the authorities. In other words, a clinical study in England was already planned for June now, so this June, which has now more or less cancelled, been cancelled or postponed, nobody knows exactly, because of Brexit and Corona. And with it, the possibility that should have been realized there could not be implemented. That means that we will, of course, strive to conduct a clinical study here as well. Just I personally have to say that I see it as my civic duty when I know that something can help not to do nothing just out of hasty obedience. Because politics still claim to this day that there are no therapeutic approaches that work. But that's been disproved. It has been proven not to be the case. And when I know there is something, then my intention was to make a virtue out of necessity. The necessity to know there is something, and at the same time to know that the finished product is still needed in China. And we had to look for opportunities that I evaluated, how can I legally provide this product in Europe in some way, as a preform, so to create the possibility that a therapy approach can even be implemented here. Although an export from China of the finished product was not legally possible. I then succeeded in setting up my own independent production facility at the same manufacturer, to obtain approval from the Chinese government with the same raw materials, to export these active ingredients as individual components, which then, according to the legal framework of the formulation, can be brought together again in pharmacies to form a medicinal product. I think this is a good moment. We, we made a little report and would like to show you, dear viewers, this report now. Enjoy.
The healing power of nature and plants has been known for thousands of years. This knowledge, which the Western world has largely lost, was preserved and improved in Asia, and is used there today in the most modern form. The reputation of so-called herbal raw drugs and the granules that came to Europe from China was bad. Lots of pollution with pesticides and pollutants, as well as the often unclear origin and purity of the granules caused uncertainty, and left the tried and tested traditional Chinese medicine, TCM for short, discredited in Europe. The processing of the herbal raw drugs was also extremely time-consuming and tedious for the patients. With a new type of dosage form that is now changing, a modern method for processing highly effective and pure plant ingredients has existed in China for several years, to so-called compactates, which are then used to manufacture effective and innovative drugs. These compactates meet the highest European quality standards and are tested according to Chinese and European pharmaceutical standards. Now this high-quality product is available all over Europe and is being sent to pharmacies for further processing, as a mixture of prescriptions as medicinal products. The compactates are not declared as raw materials by the German authorities like the normally used granules, but as active ingredients. Unlike the granules, they have the necessary therapeutic drug extract ratio and are therefore very safe for therapy. The Chinese manufacturer, Jiren Pharmaceuticals, is the only manufacturer to process the specially grown raw materials according to the ISO standard 19609 for TCM, which will soon apply worldwide. Audited by the German company Phytochem, according to the European GMP standards, Jiren now also produces the compactates exclusively for the European market. The entire testing process from sowing the seeds to growing the plants and processing them are subject to the strictest quality guidelines and transparency requirements. This ensures that the pharmacies only receive the best active ingredients that are, after another identity check, delivered directly to the customer, after mixing the recipe as a tried and tested herbal medicine. These compactates are intended to raise modern and traditional Asian phytomedicine in Europe to a new level. Safe, clean and convenient for the patient. That's the manufacturing process. Very exciting. High quality products are now coming to Germany. And now this mixture is coming to the pharmacy. Well, I have to say one more thing. If such a product is made in China, there is the normal option. Herbal raw materials, extracts and so on, are all pharmaceutical raw materials under European law. Mm -hmm. The legal requirements for pharmaceutical raw materials are nowhere near as high as for active ingredients. Due to the high quality of the products, we have succeeded in receiving the status for this underlying component mixtures, so individual plant extracts as active ingredients, and not the status of a pharmaceutical raw material. In order to produce active pharmaceutical ingredients, the manufacturer in China must apply European GMP, so good manufacturing practice. In other words, fully realize the manufacturing practice of Europeans. I, amongst others, guarantee this through constant audits. So I know the production facilities well, from the basement to the top of the roof and nothing in the manufacturing process may be changed in any way without informing the Chinese government. That means that the local government authority also approves these facilities again. German government authorities also approve these facilities in order to guarantee this very high quality. The measurement results that are made with it in China, so the approvals are insufficient at the back and front to meet European requirements. This means that the material is again completely checked in appropriate laboratories in Europe according to all specifications of the European pharmacopoeia, and then approved by me as an expert after all regulations have been complied with. 
And so from the time of release, they are also considered to be active pharmaceutical ingredients in Europe, which is only allowed to get to the pharmacy after this has been approved and is checked again in the incoming goods inspection in the pharmacy. The pharmacy is also doing, for example, an HPLC chromatogram, so a picture as we've seen before. And only if this corresponds to the original, the pharmacist may add these eight active ingredients to this corresponding mixture using his formulation table. Well, pharmacy, which pharmacy is it? That's, uh, at the moment, the train station pharmacy in Kempton. And the product is there, I believe, with the coding CC08. That's the finished mix, but actually, that is the mixture that a corona-infected person would have to have first. Yeah, someone who shows symptoms of a respiratory disease. Because we don't have to differentiate with these products between corona and influenza. But it is of no use to me to take this CC08 preventatively. You can keep the CC08 at home in advance, even without symptoms. The stuff lasts, lasts for years, because it is in a dried form. And when you need it, you dissolve it in hot water and then drink it all over three days. Got it, I'll do that. The recipe mixture for prophylaxis is also available there, but has a different coding. I, I don't have all of them. I'm responsible for the raw materials. I'm responsible for ensuring that the active ingredients are what they promise and are safe to ensure that there are no risks for the user. I'm not that well informed about the technical market details. I'll take care of it, with which coding they're traded there. So you can call, write, uh, order them, then you have it. Put it in the medicine cabinet and take it in an emergency. There are also differentiations for children, which of course have a different composition. You have to tell the pharmacist, should be said in any case, there is a differentiation for people with pre-existing conditions, without pre-existing conditions, for children, because, and, and that's the big difference, the big difference, Western medicine sees the patient as the average person. Usually, you may have noticed in the meantime that a lot of women talk about it, or feminists complain that the average patient in medicine is a 25-year-old man, and the female circumstances are overlooked. They took an average and are treating people more or less, let's say, from adolescence to old people, always with the same standard therapy, which is not individualized. We've lost this, this knowledge that the doctors used to have we treat the individual individually. With Western medicine, this is very limited. I can just break a pill in half and take half or whole. While Asian medicine always looks at the overall physique, looks at the patient and doesn't really like it that much to fall back on a standard formulation, but rather differentiates between people with previous illnesses, without previous illnesses, excludes children. We also have them in Western medicine because we have other therapeutic agents for children, that, that is correct. But the rest of the adults are all lumped together and actually treated as if they were a 25-year-old man. Crazy! Please give me the last three minutes. You also have bridged a gap to prevention. Yeah. Is that also a mix of eight or what is it? If I'm not mistaken, for prevention, it is a mix of nine components. So these are nine components that are, of course, not congruent with the therapeutic agent. Instead, we want to attack completely different areas in the body, stimulate the immune system and so on. 
und so weiter. Es gibt aber But there are also mixes for aftercare. There are also therapeutic agents that can be used after surviving an infection to support the convalescence phase positively. They are also available here. I'm, I'm running out of time, sorry. Having a CC08 at home for infected or preventatively makes perfect sense. You have it and hopefully you never need it. It is like that and you also have it. If the flu wave is coming or Corona is coming, in the initial phase when I feel the first symptoms. So if I get the flu, I'll take the CC08 and it's actually over instead of the flu shot, for example. Uh, let's put it this way. I mean, it was clearly used typically for the flu. That was the reason why I actually found it so interesting as a European. Because the death rates in China compared to Europe were statistically lower than in Europe. You have another incredibly important statistic. People just say again, they screw the statistics. No, they screw the statistics, I would say not at all, or only marginally. What does it mean to screw a statistic? Any statistic, don't believe any statistic that you haven't falsified yourself. So, of course, you always have to be careful about making sweeping judgments now. But if we clearly have to say that we have a disproportionately high number of deaths in Europe, than in Southeast Asia, then as a scientist, I had to ask myself why. Are Asians different from us in their physique? Or do they deal with it differently? But now they take this mixture of nine. Uh, what, in prophylaxis? Yes, yes. So it makes sense to me too, because Corona is here now. Yes, of course, you have to see something else. The Asian person goes to the doctor at the first sign of illness. With us, you go to the doctor when you can't take it any longer. But not our viewers. And then the doctor is supposed to help. In other words, the earlier I intervene, the higher the possibility of intervention. And the higher the degree of intervention. That means that we have a completely different way of thinking in Asia regarding when do I have to start the intervention? Namely, when I feel the first signs. And the earlier I treat it, because in many cases, herbal supplements don't work as quickly as a chemical, so every day I start therapy earlier, I have more opportunities to get really sensible therapies. Hans, specific question. I mean, you made it very clear to me. Corona is not a game. It's not funny. It, it's serious. So, and now we're sitting there. We're healthy. You are healthy. I'm healthy. And now the most sensible preventative measure is to say the virus is around now. These nine active ingredients need time to react in my body. So I would have to act now and take these nine active ingredients. Do I do this for a week, two weeks, a day? usually two to four weeks. So prevention for less than two weeks does actually not make sense. Two to four weeks. I usually recommend four weeks. Good. In terms of cost, how much is it? I'm not allowed to give therapy. I'm not a doctor. But I know the mixture of ingredients. And based on my knowledge of the physiological connections, I personally recommend four weeks. That's how I take it myself. And, and now to the budget. So four weeks, roughly, a rough estimate. Well, in general, we will always be below 100 euros. So a preventive measure of four weeks for 100 euros. And how long do these active ingredients work for? Do I have six months of protection, a year? I'll put it this way. We actually have to stop thinking that we have active protection per se. We build up an immune immune system, which then takes on a protective function. I understand. And that has, well, let's put it this way, I would assume a quarter of a year, but we always have, when, when do the waves come? Yes, sure, in autumn and in spring. There we have the waves, and this means that if you do something for your body in good time, it will certainly not do any harm. 
and the ingredients used in it are in no way harmful to the body. So these are basically alkaloid-free compounds for the overall well-being. So, of course, you have to say one thing. Asian medicine speaks of qi, of the life energy, which considers all these effects. What good I do for the body so that it can defend itself? Asian medicine doesn't say we just go for the immune system, but we actually need a general stimulus to stabilize the body, to bring it into harmony, to bring it into balance, in order to be more effective in the event of an attack from the outside. And you can do that with something like that. Dear Hans, what can I say? You actually deserve the highest respect for this chivalry that you even bring it to Europe and opened our eyes in this episode today. On the one hand about the risk, but also about the chances and possibilities that we have. Well, I have to say one thing, please do not underestimate Corona. Thank you, thank you, thank you and thank you again. Especially since, with this broadcast, I have already communicated other things from other doctors. It's important to me to hear it like that today. Taking a preventative measure makes total sense. I love plants. I'll make another interlude without wanting to annoy you. Uh, we have one thing in the regions here. We are talking about we managed relatively well so far. That does not mean that it was only a, a, let's say, a positive effect of the relevant politics. We were damn lucky to have a virus here that isn't as virulent as it is elsewhere. That may change tomorrow and we should be vigilant. That means we were lucky enough to get away with it. If we now look at death rates in other countries, the virus looks different there, and we can only hope that we won't get it here too, because it would also cause more damage to us despite good care. Thank you very much, dear Hans, for these very clear open words and this valuable broadcast. Personally, it's clear to me what I'm doing. I love prevention rather than aftercare. And I'm glad that there is such a possibility that you have opened legally, where this Chinese licensing company has also founded a company in Germany just for that, for this reason and purpose to be able to do such things legally. And for me, it is important not to have license violations, patent violations or similar stories. And above Above all, that I can be sure that the active ingredients used are really active ingredients and not something that is only appearance and not effective. Let me cordially shake your hands. Thank you very much. I'm pleased that I also get a platform to spread this kind of knowledge that is normally not noticed in public. It has to go into politics. It has to reach the government. It has to be implemented as a, as a solution system. Because exactly what you told me, the vaccination itself would only be for one variation. But with this, we actually shoot wider. Yes, much wider. That's it for today, dear viewers. Please make me happy, take the link from this broadcast and spread it to your friends and acquaintances. As a further point of view, on the one hand, in order not to trivialize what it is, and on the other hand, to show that something can be done preventatively, and that I can put such a CC08, as he said, on my shelf, in the hope that I will never need it, or possibly for the next flu, which may come again sometime in winter, to ultimately use it. Please spread this video. I think it's incredibly meaningful, one of the most important videos I've ever made. And it would be a pleasure if a lot of people also liked it a lot. With this in mind, thank you very much, all the best, and see you next time. Next time.